Welcome everybody to my channel. This is Rainer. This is my channel, Rainier Books. It's Saturday today and uh, you won't believe it. It's almost dark outside here in Sweden. This is the horrible, most horrible time of the year. We do not have so much snow in recent years and the snow usually gives us a little light in the winter in this northern parts of the world, but um, not really the past couple of years. Climate change is doing its thing here as well. And it's almost dark outside at two o'clock in the afternoon or shortly after two o'clock. But now I'm going to do the third video of our deep conversation about Charles Hughes' novel, Interior Chinatown. Let's get started. Yes, it's the third and final discussion part between Paula and me, Paula from Draw Your Book, and me, we have done our second buddy read, and we've read um, the this year's winner of the National Book Award by Charles Hugh Interior, Chinatown. There's a first video that I started talking about the book. There's a second video where Paula is answering and giving her response to questions that I've gave to her and she, her own thoughts of the book. So this is a series based on something that Sarah from Hardcover Hearts started uh, on Booktube in deep conversation about a novel. Now today I'm going to answer the questions that I got from Paula. And here is her first one was, or your first one Paula was, um, you have, yeah, I was asking you if, if you thought that this year's National Book Award winner was in the structure and in the way, in the formal way of writing, um, more advanced than the winner of this year's Booker Prize, because the Booker has a reputation of being the most uh, progressive and advanced prize concerning the form and structure of literature. And you answered and asked me what I thought uh, when I would compare this, uh, if I have read any other novels of the National Book Award list, and um, if I was sort of um, a little bit pre, if I was a little predisposed by the fact, is that a correct word, to that, that, that I knew that Charles Yu had won the Booker Prize with that book that we started reading a couple of days after he, the prize was uh, announced for him. So I actually did a little research because this year from the long list, I read only one more book of the Booker Prize yet. There are more, have more plans reading more books and they are scheduled already. But I have read only with you, um, The Great Offshore Grounds uh, by Vanessa Veselka. And uh, comparing these two books is very difficult apparently. Um, I think that um, the form of Vanessa's book is totally different. She has, as she told us in, in that beautiful um, conversation that we had with her as a fourth video, she told us about the great divide in the American novel that came, I think, according to her in the 1950s between the character driven and the plot driven um, literature and novels. And uh, she was also thinking, this was one of the many things she was thinking about her book, of maybe trying to bring these two things together. And that's what I thought actually when I read um, The Great Offshore Grounds, that this was also something special in, in because I thought at some points I thought it was plot driven and then it was character driven and I really couldn't decide, but in the end it was more character driven than, than plot driven probably. But I really liked the form that, or the, the, the ingredients, the tools that Vanessa Vasalka used in telling her story, although I didn't get all of them, like the appearance of um, uh, Sir Walter Raleigh and this uh, great marine guy Lejeune and what they're doing to the characters, but now we're getting too complicated. But there's a lot of ingredients in, in Vanessa Vasalka's novel that I really think are not only straight telling of a story. So there was another, at least another title on the long list, but I looked at the books that I've read of, of the long lists of 2019 and 2018, and just have to look at my computer. So last year, I read um, Sabrina and Corina, the short stories by Kali, Fajardo, and Steen. I read Lila Lalami's novel, The 
Other Americans. I read Julia Phillips's novel Disappearing Earth, Ocean Wong's On Earth Were Briefly Gorgeous, and Colson Whitehead's The Nickel Boys. And I think all of these novels, um, on all of the collections, are very special. And I think that the reputation or the uh, maybe the um, prejudice that some people have towards the National Book Award are not really justified because uh, the, the short stories by Colin Forcardo and Steen, Sabrina and Karina, a great story collection about um, Native American Latina women who live in the vicinity of Denver, Colorado and about what they have suffered, endured, uh, is uh, an amazing collection of short stories and not only written for the mainstream market, definitely not. If I remember from this year's Book of List reading Ann Tyler's uh, novel, uh, Redhead by the Side of the Road, which I enjoyed, but which was not more than a pleasant um, novel. Um, and Kylie Reed was on the, remember that Kylie Reed is a good book as well. Many people said negative things about Kylie Reed's uh, such a fun age. I liked it a lot. But this is also, this was on the book along list, this is also not a book that is really special in the way it tells its story. There There by Tommy Orange is a lot more advanced. Or if you look at Nafisa Thompson Spires in her short stories, Heads of the Colored People, I like very much the way, which is not new, where, where there are certain um, stories with uh, the same characters and you can follow the characters over the span of uh, a few decades. Uh, which is not new. There is no um, advantage that the Booker has uh, over the National Book Award. The thing that the Booker is different from the National Book Award is mainly the fact that it is open to um, even to American uh, literature and it opened up a couple of years ago, as well, and I think in 2014 it did, which I don't think is good because I think that um, the National Book Award should be, is, is the American Award and the Booker Prize should have stayed, uh, should have kept itself to uh, literature which is not from the United States and not from um, Canada, uh, as Canada has its Scotia Giller Bank, Scotia Bank Giller Prize. And of course, everyone is free, and this is a free society, and is free to do any award that they want to do. What I mean, so it didn't affect me that that Charles Hugh actually that, that was the final question, wasn't it? Of the actually the second question, but it was part of the first question. Um, so it didn't affect me a lot that Charles Hugh won the National Booker. I think that didn't make me more critical towards this novel, or it didn't make me more. Um, sort of positive towards this novel when I read it, because I have come to the conclusion that uh, in these kinds of uh, awards are, um, as I said before in one of my videos, one of my other videos, I think awards are a part of marketing. They are a way of lifting up titles, of lifting up authors and books and, and publishers. So I think being on the long list is already, being on the long list is already um, a great thing. And I think you and I, Paolo, we have no doubt that even Vanessa Vesalkas, the great offshore ground, would have deserved to be on the shortlist of the Booker. But I wouldn't say that I would kick out this one from the shortlist and put Vanessa in, in, into the, onto the shortlist. And uh, I actually think that all the books on the long, probably all books on the long list would deserve to win a prize, if it's the Booker or the National Book Award or the Scotiabank Giller Prize. I was disappointed in Canada that they didn't shortlist Five Little Indians by Michelle Good. Um, maybe it was too emotional, too heartfelt, but uh, yeah, I'm still waiting for How to Pronounce Knife. So I wasn't influenced too much. Second question. Um, you asked me if, if his choice of writing the novel as a script instead of writing a conventional novel or essays because it's there's not so much plot in it. So if if you if I think that uh, the script is the right way of doing this, doing this topic, doing this this core issue that he probably wants to tell us or discuss, and I think yes, he did the right thing, the absolute right thing, because nowhere else in um, the um, entertainment industry. I know a lot of people might react now 
that I include literature in the entertainment industry, but I do, uh, because it's an industry that lies behind, um, that is behind, and all those people are artists, no, no matter what, no question about this. I think all people, I think nowhere else in, in this kind of entertainment business, we have such strong images, you know, like in the movies and in television and TV shows. And um, the thing that I clipped away from my first video, which I made, which was far too long, was uh, I was telling, um, I was speaking about, and that I will do now, I was speaking about the time when I grew up in uh, Germany, in Mönchengladbach, uh, Mönchengladbach um, all those years ago. And uh, we watched this television, my brother and I, I have a brother who's four years older than, than, than me. So we watched, when we were kids, we watched all these American Western movies, you know. And at the time in the 70s, uh, there were so many American Western shows, um, like television shows, like uh, The Claim We Hold Is Good As Go, Bonanza. You know, Bonanza, of course, with Lauren Green and Michael Landon and Dan Blocker and also with their wonderful cook, Hop Singh. And Hop Singh was a funny figure. And this is already also uh, a thing that I have to talk about because, because Hop Singh is a typical stereotype, not a typical, yeah, he's a typical stereotype uh, Asian uh, Chinese cook in that television series, Bonanza. He's the funny guy. They are, uh, they have no mother. The three boys living on the Ponderosa Ranch with their father, they have no mother. Lauren Green, the rancher, Ben Cartwright, he has uh, this Chinese cook instead of a mother. Bad boy! Very bad boy! And so the Chinese cook is the funny guy. He can't speak English properly. He is always, uh, he can't pronounce the R sounds, you know. And um, he's reduced to uh, a few seconds in each show when he has to give some jokes and this also um is interesting uh in connection to the novel by 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 uh, charles hugh because charles hugh's novel has also been described as funny and hilarious because he makes these sort of funny and hilarious moments but they are supposed to sit in our to stuck to get stuck in our throat, this laughter that we had about Hop Singh when we were 13 years old or 12 years old, which was understandable, I think, at the time and very innocent. But um, what I understand now, of course, so many years later, thinking back to Bonanza and Hop Singh, is that how much cliche and stereotype was produced uh, in the 70s and how much racism there was, even racism that was not intentional racism, I think, but it was... Um, clear racism, um, if we look at how um, minorities um, in the U.S. entertainment industry were portrayed in the 1970s. So uh, that was Bonanza. And so I think that is absolutely right, because this Bonanza Hop Singh uh, was a part of my, my upbringing, a part of my, my, my socialization. And another thing that I uh, was uh, thinking about, another TV series when I grew up, we watched, um, Kung, I think it was kind of called Kung Fu in Germany. It was a television show from the US. It had three seasons with David Carradine as, um, I forgot the name actually of his character, but he was sort of Kung Fu guy. He played a Shaolin priest from China who came to the United States in the 19th century into the Wild West to look for his brother. And he encountered a lot of situations. He was in a lot of situations. He was a very peaceful man. But then, of course, uh, the um, people forced him to defend himself. And he was a great kung fu guy. He could kick them all, you know. And that's also the... the here's the span in my two... The two stories that I tell right now between um, the cook, the Chinese cook. Very funny guy, you know, can't, can't pronounce it. It's so ridiculous because the actor, uh, I think his name was Victor, Victor Young, um, he was born in San Francisco and I'm sure he spoke English without any accent. But in, in, in the show, he has to speak the accent, of course. And then on the other side, you have David Carradine, which is not uh, an Asian American. He's an American. Um, he's, he's, he's an American without Asian uh, descent. He plays Kung Fu guy and, and that's the span from Hop Singh to the Kung Fu guy that I grew up with. And I think that's very interesting. And I think also that is the stereotype in the movies that are 
um, giving us so much um, that, that makes so much with us in our childhoods and our adolescence that they give us strong pictures, you know, that are so strong. I think Charles Hugh does very, very well um, in doing this novel as a script of a novel. It's an absolute right thing to do. And I really admire that he did it. So the last question, my God, I'm talking a lot again today. Uh, the last question that you had was the, the social uh, comments that he has, that Charles has in this book. And uh, he has this black and white uh, story that he tells by the police television show that is inside the novel where he has the black cop guy and the white cop woman who are never sort of having a romantic affair, but who are always close, they're always flirting with each other. And if uh, you were asking if, if Charles is too easy on this topic of black and white, I think no. Because we talk so much about, and, and rightfully so, we talk so much about the problems, the racism in the United States that exists, that is institutional, that is uh, against uh, Afro-American people. Rightfully so, absolutely rightfully so. There's so much books, there's so many novels, there's so many documentaries. But what we don't do and what we not have done yet is talk about uh, another race, the other racisms uh, are a, a little bit quieter in, in the U.S. because I, I don't want to weigh them up against each other, so to speak. We should never do that. But um, there are other topics, the other stories to be told, I am sure. And that's just the Asian American story, the Asian American experience when people get battered, get, get, get abused, get killed because a president speaks of the Chinese virus. And there are Americans who aggressively turn that on towards innocent people. Asian Americans and Asian people in the United States get assaulted because the virus comes from China. Um, people get assaulted still in the United States because Pearl Harbor happened in 1941. Japanese people got uh, into uh, concentration camps in the 1940s. And there's not so much talk about this line of history, but, but to, to bring in a full focus on the Asian American discussion, I think Charles Yu doesn't do any harm to, to, to the overall discussion of racism in the country, which is also, of course, we are not supposed to forget Native Americans. So, so I think that all the topics, all the racial divides that exist in the U.S. are worth books, movies, and, and discussion. And I think it's no problem that, that um, Charles is focusing on this um, wider, on this, on this issue of Asian Americans in this book. There's a final court scene uh, where uh, Willis Wu, the, the main character, is um, the defendant. And uh, Turner, Miles Turner, the, the black cop of this television show, Black and White, which is, uh, I think, the basis of, of this uh, script here, is Turner is um, a witness and he says about the main Asian character, Willis Wu, he says he thinks he can participate in this rare dialogue because Asians haven't been persecuted as much as black people. And then he, add, he addresses Willis Wu, don't you need to take some responsibility for yourself? For the categories you put us in, black and white? I mean, come on, do you think you're the only one who's trapped? I think that the, the court scene is very, um, it's, it's the worst part of the book uh, because uh, the court scene sort of summarizes the whole book and gives um, the discussion almost like in a, in a way that Bertolt Brecht would have used in his um, theater um, to explain everything once again and, and uh, in an easy way to the audience. Um, there are... Um, for example, the, if, if you listen to what the older brother has to say about Willis Wu, his brother, he's asking to be treated like an American, a real American, because honestly, when you think American, what color do you see? White? Black? We've been here 200 years. The first Chinese came in 1815. Germans and Dutch and Irish and Italians who came at the turn of the 20th century, they're American. Why doesn't this face register as American? Is it because we make is it because we make the story too complicated because we haven't figured out how yet?
Whether it's a tragedy or a comedy or something in between, if we haven't cracked the code of what it's like to be inside this face, then how can we explain it to anyone else? This is strong, this is good, I, I like it, but uh, after, after a great novel, it wasn't necessary to explain that, like Bertolt Brecht, I said. Um, I would lo really love to ask Charles about that uh, part of, of the book um, to the audience in the final stages of the novel. Like he wants to summarize the whole thing and to really explain it to the ones who might not have understood his point. This is a great novel. I love to read it. I love to read it with you, Paula. It was great. It's always great to, to read novels with you. And I hope we do uh, another buddy read next year. Um, I hope that you're satisfied with my answers and I want everyone to subscribe to Paula's channel and um, I hope that we'll see each other soon. Yes, tomorrow we'll see each other because I will make a weekly wrap-up of the week that lies behind me, the, the week that lies behind us and the world. So um, as always, wear a mask, socially distance, stay safe and bye-bye.